Hello, welcome to Wanda's Cafe. And I'm excited today because as you can see that in honor of Kwanzaa, I'm wearing, most of you have never seen me in my traditional garments from what we refer to as the motherland, from the land of Kemet. And we have someone who's gonna tell us more about what I'm talking about, about Kwanzaa. And so excited about who we have here today. I've had many guests that I'm honored to have on my show. But this one, I think, has touched more lives than anyone probably in America. This, per, this is someone who has brought the African-American family celebration to America. And I can't believe that we have the Honorable Dr. Mawalana Karanga with Thank us you today. Much. Thank it's good you. To be here. Doctor, you honor me by your invitation. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Very and you, Dr. Kwan, Dr. Uh, Karanga is the creator of Kwanzaa. Dr. Karanga, yes. welcome to Wanda's Cafe. It's good to be here. Thank you. Now, you are a professor. Well, you know, your credits, we don't, we, they're long. Yes. So we're just going to kind of briefly so that I can have the people know and understand yes. Kwanzaa, yes. those who don't know, those who do know can refresh themselves. And we can also, you know, just celebrate. Yes. Uh, I wanted to, you're a professor now at Long Beach. Yeah, I'm a professor of... Black Studies. Black Studies. California State University, Long Beach. California State, Long Beach. Mm -hmm. And you have, you hold two doctorates, PhDs. Yes, two PhDs and one in political science, the second in social ethics. Mm -hmm. And I have an honorary doctorate from the University of Durban, Westfield, in South Africa. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, when you, you create Kwanzaa and you also are uh, uh, in uh, president of an organization, Yeah, Us? I'm chair of the organization, Us, which is the founding organization of us and I'm chair also of the National Association of Coweta Organizations uh, which is uh, organizations that use my philosophy don't belong to us but use my philosophy uh, for value orientation philosophical grounding mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now uh, also when you uh, cre pan uh, Kwanzaa is a pan African. African. Tell me what you mean by that. I All know right. what that means, but I want to make sure everyone... Yes, certainly. Uh, when we say Pan-African, it means it belongs to all African. So Kwanzaa is first an African-American holiday, but it is a Pan-African in that it is built on and based on the best of African views and values, mm -hmm. um, and by which we understand and assert ourselves mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. And of course, I've written a, a definitive text on that called Kwanzaa, um, a celebration of family, community, and culture. And that was what we saw in the, the yes. opening. Yes, and I urge people to read that because there's a lot of misconceptions about uh, Kwanzaa for people not reading and studying. Uh, I won't say that the majority of African people know that, but sometimes people who come in who've just heard about it might not understand it in terms of its beauty, integrity, and expansive meaning. So I urge you to get the book as a foundation I and to urge your library to get the book. Of course, absolutely. I know that uh, a few years ago uh, I had said to someone who's not African American, uh, Kwan celebrating Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa, what's Kwanzaa? And I said, the uh, African American celebration, a holiday celebration. Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, you got to have your own holiday now. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure. <laughs> That the people who have not actually been out there in the in the um, in the in mm -hmm. the world of other people. Yes, and see, we need to do that. Know, know that this is not a sep It's not a substitute mm -hmm. for anything. For anything, it has its own initiative. It has its own integrity. Mm -hmm. It's a dignity affirming celebration of family, community, and culture that African people engage in every year. Mm -hmm. I created Kwanzaa not in opposition to anything. Mm -hmm. I created Kwanzaa, first of all, uh, for three basic reasons. One, to reaffirm our rootedness in African culture. We are an African people, but because of the Holocaust of enslavement, we were lifted out of our own history and culture and made a forgotten footnote and casualty in other people's mm -hmm. history and culture. So when we were in the 60s, we were struggling to return to our our history and our culture, speak our own special culture truth, and make our own unique contribution that's when to we the forward to, flow to of to human history. That's when we go ahead. Yes. No, please. The second reason I created was to give us a time when all around the world, we as African people, that's the Pan-African character, we as African people all over the world 
could come together, reaffirm the bonds between us, sit down and meditate on the meaning and awesome responsibility of being African in the world. And certainly that has happened because now over 28 million people throughout the world African community on every continent in the world celebrate this holiday. And finally, I created Kwanzaa in order to introduce and reaffirm the importance of communitarian African values, values that stress and strengthen family, community, and culture. And of course, the hub and hinge on which the holiday turns are the Nguzo Saba, the seven principles. Mm -hmm. And those values or principles, as everyone knows, are first in Swahili and then in English. Umoja, unity. Mm -hmm. Kujichagalia, self-determination. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. Mm -hmm. Ujama, cooperative economics. Nia, purpose, Kaumba, creativity, and Imani, faith. Okay. First, let's start with you said uh, you, you created it and you, you Kwanzaa of using the language that is the most universal language, yes. which would be Swahili. Swahili. It's the most wide, widely spread language in Africa, okay. and it's not simply attached to an ethnic group. It is uh, uh, certainly uh, the language, the most wi again, the most widely spread language of Africa, and therefore a Pan-African uh, language. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. over 13 countries speak it. Mm -hmm. It's spoken in over 13 countries. And then you used uh, the word, the, the Swahili word of Kwanzaa is just with one A. Yes. The history behind that is that the word Kwanzaa comes from the phrase Matunda Ya Kwanzaa, which means first fruits. And that shows the origin of the holiday, which is in the first fruits or first harvest celebrations of Africa. Uh, and Kwanzaa means first. But at the beginning of the organization, we had seven children that wanted to uh, represent the letters of Kwanzaa and do an acrostic. And we only had six letters. So to show our emphasis on the person, we added an A so that all the children that wanted to could, in fact, participate in the celebration. So that's how Kwanzaa has its second A. Okay. And you said the Nguzo Saba. Tell us what Nguzo Saba means. Nguzo Saba means seven principles or seven pillars. These are the foundations of our community. When I was creating Kwanzaa, I studied African culture and I asked myself, what is the social glue and cement that holds these cultures together, give them the humanistic uh, and beautiful character. Uh, and I found out it was the communitarian values. And what I did was then choose seven of these values that not only continuously appeared in my studies of African culture, mm -hmm. but also were necessary mm -hmm. in the contribution of the liberation struggle mm -hmm. we were waging. Mm -hmm. Kwanzaa is a product also of the black freedom movement. Yes. Uh, and there yes. are two aspects I, to it. Yes. There's a political aspect of freedom and justice mm -hmm. and equality and power, but there's also the culture aspect mm -hmm. of recovering the best of what it means to be African mm -hmm. and human in the fullest sense, mm -hmm. speaking that special culture truth mm -hmm. to the world mm -hmm. and using it as a framework and foundation to enrich and enhance our lives as a people. I notice in your book you refer a great deal to restructuring and uh, finding and, uh, you know our future as well as yes. the history. Yes. And was that one of the bases? Oh yeah. One of the most important acts of uh, a people today who has uh, suffered the kind of oppression uh, that we have suffered is to recover our history and our culture and to use it, as I said earlier, as a foundation and framework to enhance and enrich our lives, to push our lives forward, to shape our future, mm -hmm. and to contribute to this ongoing human project of expanding the realm of human freedom and human flourishing in the world. That's a multicultural project too, so Kwanzaa comes at a Absolutely. good time because it helps people to appreciate other cultures. It speaks a special cultural truth that not only speaks directly to African people, but speaks to the best of what it means to be human, because the highest African values are at the same time the highest human value. We are the ones who stood up first, spoke the first human truth, mm -hmm. taught the world what was good and beautiful. We are the ones who said, speak truth, 
do justice, mm -hmm. honor your elders and your ancestors, mm -hmm. cherish your and challenge your children, mm -hmm. care for the poor and vulnerable among you, mm -hmm. give food to the hungry, water to the thirsty, clothes to the naked and a boat to those without mm -hmm. one. Be a staff of support for those of old age, be a shelter for the battered, a husband for the widow, a father for orphan, a, mo a mother for the timid, mm -hmm. a raft for the drowning, and a ladder for those trapped in the pit of despair. We taught the world these things, and people came to ancient Egypt, called Kemet then, to learn. Jew, Gentile, Hittite, Hyksos, Roman, Greek, Persian, Libyan, they all came to study. Well, I, 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 tra I didn't get a chance, to, I haven't traveled with you to Egypt, but I had an opportunity to travel with a good friend of yours, Dr. Asa Hilliard, yes. uh, to Egypt uh, yes. to do a dig, and, and for we also was there when Jesse got his honorary doctorate from Cairo University. Yes. And I tell you, I felt so at home. Mm. Is that, I mean, is that something that other blacks feel when they oh, go? Oh, yes. People feel very good. People get off the plane and kiss the ground. Yes. It's a return. You say, uh, the ancient text said, come back to mm -hmm. the black land. Mm -hmm. come, back come back to Egypt. And that's what Kemet is. Yes. <laughs> Kemet means the black land. The black land. So Originally, it was the, the black land before it was Egypt. And before oh, no, it was Egypt Africa. is Greek. Is, is it's Greek. Greek it, it's really an Anglicization of the Greek. Okay. Uh, that they, um, but Kemet, uh, well, Africa was originally called Kemet. Right? The, the ancient Egyptians called their land, land Kemet. Kemet. Mm -hmm. Kemet, and um, uh, there are some other names they call it, Ta okay. Mary, which means beloved land. Okay, mm -hmm. but it was not Hillary Clinton who said it takes a village. Oh, no, that's our culture. A lot of times people get things from us mm -hmm. and they don't know it because mm -hmm. it's hidden under the mm -hmm. mystification of racism mm -hmm. and oppression. Mm -hmm. For example, the whole concept that we're in the image of God actually comes not from the Jewish text, but comes from the ancient Egyptian text to Hosea as early as 2140 BCE, where Keti says, we're in the image of God came from his very person, and there are certain things we cannot do to ourselves nor allow others to do, or at least we violate that special status. Mm -hmm. And so the whole idea of human dignity, inherent worthiness, evolves from the ancient Egyptian uh, classical text. Okay, let's, let's go start with the Nguza Saba and start what, how would, if a family were together, and to start preparing for the celebration. First of all, tell us the dates. Mm -hmm. The Kwanzaa is from 26 December to the 1st of January. And it is seven days long, and it introduces the seven principles. Okay. So that the first day, December the 26th, Uzumoja, the 27 uh, is Kujichako Leo, all the way to January 1st, mm -hmm. which is a mining day. Mm -hmm. But that's also Siku Yatamule, which is the day of meditation, mm -hmm. in which we are to sit down mm -hmm. and think soberly okay. on what it means to be an African, mm -hmm. to measure ourselves in the mirror of the best of our culture mm -hmm. and ask where do we stand. Mm -hmm. And to do that, we are to ask ourselves three basic questions. Who am I? Am I really who I am? And am I all okay. I ought to be? Now, the f day one, they, they would have to set the table, the umoja, we would we, we have our candles. Could you describe to yes. them so that? Kwanzaa, like all other holidays, has its uh, symbols. And so there's seven basic symbols and two supplementary ones. The first symbol, of course, is the mazao, which are the uh, crops. And since it's a first fruit celebration, then it uh, the crops represent its historical origin in those first fruit mm -hmm. celebrations. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have the mat, the mkeka. Okay, so mazao means crop, and keka means mat. Okay. Mat is a uh, foundation, tradition, and history. So all the other symbols are put on that and around that because we say no matter how high a house is built, it must stand on something, mm -hmm. and that something is our tradition. Mm -hmm. And then we have also the kinata, or the candle holder, yes. and that represents our roots, our, our rootedness in our parent people, continental African people, mm -hmm. our ancestors. Mm -hmm. And inside the... Um, 
the kinata or the seven candles. Mm -hmm. And the candles represent the seven principles. Mm -hmm. And you would notice the candles are black, red, red and green. Mm -hmm. Those are Tell colors those are colors based on the international black colors given to us by the Honorable Marcus Garvey. Yes, yes. Which are red, yes. black, and green. Yes. But in our organization we have in black, red, and green. And bl uh, there's an order to it. Black is for black people, red is for struggle, and green is for the future and promise that comes from the struggle. And so what we do here is teach a lesson. First the people, always put the people first. First. So we light the black candle first. Okay. 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 Then second, we light the red candle okay. to indicate that the people must struggle. Okay. That struggle is the most characteristic aspect of the human personality. Yes. That is how we understand ourselves. That is how we realize ourselves. Mm -hmm. We struggle to come into being. That's called birth. We struggle to make the most out of being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's called life. And we struggle not to go out of being, that's called the quest for immortality. So you light the black candle for the people, red candle for the uh, struggle, and then green for the future and promise that comes from this daily, personal, and collective uh, struggle. Mm -hmm. So those are the candles in the Nguzo Saba, the principle. And then we have the corn, or muhindi, and that represents the people, uh, the children. So you, you put a corn, an ear of corn down, whether you have biological children or not, oh. because it takes a whole community to raise children. That's right. Therefore, all the parents are parents of the children. All the adults are parents of the children. So we have, in African culture, both specific and general parenthood. Mm -hmm. And so when you hear the proverb, it takes a whole community to raise a child, we're referring to the obligation of general parenthood, mm -hmm. okay? And then, of course, we have uh, the kikombe, which is the unity cup. Uh, and that we have to demonstrate our need to always have this as our first and fundamental principle. To see ourselves as one, to strive for unity in the family, community, nation, and race. Mm -hmm. And to make sure that we always honor the best of what it means to be African and human and to speak that special cultural truth to the world and to make our own unique contribution to the forward flow of mm -hmm. human history. Mm -hmm. And then we have Zawadi. And Zawadi, uh, you know, these are gifts. Uh, the Unity Cup is called Kikombe Cha Umoja. And the uh, gifts are called Zawadi in Swahili. And you always give children two gifts, no matter whether the gift you give them. Mm -hmm. And you must always avoid excessive gift giving and expensive gifts, because we give so little unless we give of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And your gift can never be a substitute for yourself. Okay. You must give them. And what you must give them is hope, and you must give them direction. And so what we always give children, regardless of what else we give them, is a book and a heritage symbol. The heritage symbol to demonstrate our commitment to our own history. It is a reaffirmation that there is no culture as ancient as ours, no culture richer than ours, no culture more meaningful and productive than ours. Mm -hmm. So we teach that lesson by giving that heritage symbol. And then our commitment to education. We're the one who said, better is a book than a well-built house. Better is a book than a memorial plaque in the temple. In ancient Kemen, this is a sacred text. In the Oduifa, the sacred text of the Yoruba, the Yoruba teach that the first criteria for a good world is that the people have full knowledge of things and they have wisdom adequate to govern their lives and the world and to move in it in such a way they constantly bring good into the world and not let any good be lost. Mm -hmm. So this has carried not only from ancient Kemet and to Yoruba land, but even uh, in our own uh, African American culture expression where people said knowledge is so important, it is something that people cannot take from you and you use it to not only free yourself, but to build a world we all want That's and right. deserve to live in. And great people like W.B. Du Bois and Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, oh, my, great educators, one of my mentors. <laughs> who taught us that we must always get knowledge and that we who have knowledge have this responsibility to discover the dawn mm -hmm. and then share it with the masses who need it most. And it was not Bush, but it was Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune who said, let's leave no child. That's okay. right. That's from the Black Women's Club movement. The, the That's a very National important. National Council of Negro Women. Yes, and the Black Women's Club movement, mm -hmm. of which that was a part. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, 
during the 60s, it was a time of, uh, of, of acknowledgement for us. It was a, a very, very important time for the African Americans because that's when we decided we could wear our hair in, in what we call natural and we could wear our natural look. And, and I think this was the time that we, Kwanzaa, was a god. I think it was something we had to have. I think yeah. it was something that came to you at the most important time for us. It, did. it was a struggle, as I said. It was a constant uh, struggle to free ourselves. Kwanzaa is an act of freedom. It's a freedom-loving, freedom-affirming holiday because what it does is help us break the culture dominance of the dominant society and to speak our own special culture truth. Mm -hmm. we, we, that we were suffering from cultural imperialism of the dominant society. They defined reality. They defined what was good and beautiful. We, in the 60s, broke that monopoly, mm -hmm. broke that chain, mm -hmm. and began to recover mm -hmm. the best of what it means to be African and human mm -hmm. and to speak that special mm -hmm. culture truth. And Kwanzaa is a part of that process. Mm -hmm. And I really want people to always see it, that it is a clear example of the seven principles itself in practice. In order to do it, we had to do it together. And I always give black people thanks for all over the world seeing the beauty of Kwanzaa, to see its meaning and to accept it as something of great value that not only would enrich and expand their life, but was worthy of being given to their children as a legacy to go from generation to generation. And I know that you've lectured around the world on the subject yes. and on other subjects yes. of an antiquities and ancient yes. civilizations and, yes. and Egyptology, where some of the places, some of the most important places and, and, and the things that have happened that was most important to you in, in yes. terms of one. Certainly I've lectured in uh, Africa, um, South Africa, Nigeria, Senegal, um, Egypt, uh, but I've also lectured in Cuba, in Trinidad, uh, in China. Uh, in Canada, in England, uh, other places around the world. And I've uh, enjoyed going and sharing with the black communities in these places mm -hmm. uh, because what we're doing is reaffirming our kinship mm -hmm. and reaffirming this ancient and wonderful legacy that we have. And we're remembering Dr. M Mary McLeod Bethune's teaching that we are heirs and custodians of a great legacy and we must bear the burden and glory of our history with strength, dignity, mm -hmm. and determination. I noticed another thing that you uh, have written quite a number of, bo of well, books and writings and I just wanted to have the people know which ones they were. Introduction to Black Studies. Yes. Tell me about that one. Introduction to Black Studies is the most widely used uh, introductory text in Black Studies, used in over 250 uh, colleges and universities as required texts. Uh, and what it does, it sums up the massive history and critical issues of, of African people, especially in this country, but also around the world. And uh, selection from the Husea? Yes, Husea, the ain't Sacred Wisdom of Ancient Egypt. Uh, here is original that's, translation. Now, of course, you know, that's um, that one's the one I'm interested in. Yes. Most important. Here is a, um, original translation of ancient Egyptian sacred text, especially the ethical text. Uh, in fact, I'm the first one to do that and bring this uh, to uh, African Americans and African people all over the world uh, so that they could read from their own text. Yeah, that was my son's because you know that's his 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 field is a, uh, ancient civilization and Egyptology and so forth. That was his. Yes. 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 And then uh, Ku Kuwait. And now I would just like to Go just ahead. make I'm another sorry. point. <clears throat> is that because I thought this was so important, I actually went back to school. I had gotten my uh, doctorate. At first I was getting my doctorate at UCLA and the movement came. I quit, then went back and got my uh, doctorate after the movement was over. <laughs> but then I went and get a second one in 90, in 94. Um, I, I did an 800 page a dissertation called Mat, the Moral Idea in Ancient Egypt, a study in classical African ethic. Because I believe that black people who wrote the first spiritual and ethical text should have something to say about the critical issues facing us as a people, a country, and a world. Mm -hmm. And I wanted black studies as a discipline to be the home of that discourse, okay? Mm -hmm. And so I, I made that contribution. And then I moved from there to study classical uh, Yoruba civilization. And there again, I did original uh, class, uh, translation of the Yoruba text uh, from the Odu Ifa. Odu Ifa is the sacred text of the Yoruba land. And 
usually people see it as a divination text, but I extracted the ethical teachings and demonstrated how beautiful they are and how you could in, use them to engage in modern moral reflection on the critical issues facing our time. So my the other text was then Odu Ifa, the ethical teachings. Mm -hmm. Also, the Odu Ifa, the ethical teachings, that's yes. one of them. And then the Kuwaita, which is... Uh, that's my philosophy. Kawaita is a philosophy I began to develop and continue to develop since the 60s. Kawaita means tradition and reason, an ongoing synthesis of the best of African thought and practice in constant exchange with the world. Mm -hmm. And so I have an ongoing, lifelong project mm -hmm. of recovering, uh, reconstructing, synthesizing the best of African thought and practice in constant exchange okay. with the world. I wanted to, the, what, the book and that you're is, studying here. Yes, Go and ahead. it is the philosophy out of which I created uh, Kwanzaa and the Seven Principle. In fact, Kwanzaa became an institutional process by which I introduced Kawaita philosophy and then Guzo Saba. And that is why Kwanzaa, one of the reasons Kwanzaa has seven days, it is to introduce these principles and through that to introduce this philosophy, which again brings forth the best of what it means to be African and human in the fullest sense. This other point I think is very important. As an intellectual, uh, I create Kwanzaa. Um, as something of value for African people that they can use, okay? Because in our culture, we are taught knowledge is never simply knowledge for knowledge's sake. Knowledge is always knowledge for human sake. And Mary McLeod is right when she said, people want to know what you're gonna do with your knowledge. In other words, how does your knowledge in, uh, improve the human condition and enhance the human future. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to create something of value that people could embrace you and use <laughs> you to enri <laughs> en enrich their lives. And now, uh, the Kawaita then is a philosophy that sets in motion a discourse, mm -hmm. a discussion about what it means to be African okay. and what our role We've is. We've got one minute for you to, if, so if they need to get, if want to get one of the bo your book, uh, yes. especially Kwanzaa. First, go to our website, W www.official Kwanzaa website, mm -hmm. official Kwanzaa website, okay, dot org, mm -hmm. official Kwanzaa website, mm -hmm. dot org. Mm -hmm. Also, they can call Sankoi Press, uh, Sankoi, S A N K O R E Press, yes. uh, at area code 323 uh, 295-97. Nine, now, nine. I did not give that to my director, so it's not going to be printed on there. They can contact okay. me, they can contact and I will get make yes. sure that they get yes. it. Uh, but if they go to the website, they that data it. is on, on, mm -hmm. uh, on the website. Now, tell me, if the, is we going to before we go out we're going to go out with uh, Kwanzaa music and we have to go and 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 Santa Sha Santa Santa to you thank, thank you so much thank for coming so much. i wish we had more time I wish we we'll you. see you next time on Wanda's cafe thank you so much thank you, thank you.